And it's always a pleasure to have Matthew Hussey in here. Hi, Matthew Hussey. Hello. And you brought your dad. Yeah, I got my dad with me today, which I've just realized was a really dangerous move. We yeah, love what your you dad. Thinking? What he, have he, I done? He brought his, his <laughs> handsome dad into a room full of horny people. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Hi, Matthew dad. Hussey's dad. I have no complaints about being in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Very your nice. eyes are piercingly blue. Thank you. Let's continue. No, oh, can we? Don't start. Let's just. <laughs> oh, it's a pleasure to be here. No, no Matthew's yeah, mad. But Matthew's mad because his dad's getting all the attention. <laughs> we tried to hug him first, and Matthew said no. I literally put myself between you, and I said, <laughs> yeah. I've earned the right to the first hug with the amount of times I've been what is, here. What is your problem? He's just shown up. You know, <laughs> you know Matthew, you get, you get all the attention. Why do you have to be such an attention by, hog? By the way, and I've got a bone to pick with you. Okay, which one? I, someone. I, so I do a little event event in New York for my customers the other night and one of them comes up to me and says yeah Elvis said you were going to be on the radio in a couple of days except he called you Andrew Hussey yes yeah and I went Th I've been around long enough for you to know my first name <laughs> but but then I realized it was probably because Andrew I don't know where he is yeah. but Andrew does impressions no. of me yes that is. So he does. which I've been told I'll tell you why and he's essentially replaced me I'll yes, tell you why I called you Andrew Hussey <laughs> and when I tell you the answer you're going to feel awful for bringing this up. Oh, Prepare no. to feel shame. Uh, <laughs> we've been dealing with hurricanes. This is no, that no, no, is no, not no, no, fair. No, no, no. This, is, this is absolutely this. true. This is exactly what happened. We've been dealing with hurricanes for the past two, two or three weeks, and Hurricane Andrew oh, was on no. my mind. There was a Hurricane Matthew, was there not? Yeah, there yeah. was last year. Hurricane oh. Matthew. So I'm dealing with hurricanes. Look at you coming in swinging, Matthew Hussey, and you just got knocked how, down. How dare you? <laughs> I am... Um, I'm Tell me how often you feel. More quiet for the rest of the show. <laughs> oh, stop it. I will say, though, when I need advice and you're not around, Matthew, I do go to Elvis's <laughs> assistant, Andrew, and ask him to do you to give me advice. He tells he does us very well. about the butterfly. Yeah. Is, it, is his advice good? The but, you know what? <laughs> Has he evolved don't get, it? Don't get mad at me, but before you leave... You have to tell the butterfly story. Okay, I will. Makes us cry. Oh, it makes us cry. Right. Andrew, tell it. That never makes me mad when you ask me to say something. Okay. <laughs> All right, so Matthew Hussey is here. Hurricane He's Matthew crabby. Hussey is here. And as you know, because of everything we're going through, especially in Texas, the Caribbean, and now Florida and states around, I mean... You're not only about dating advice, you're also about just motivational advice. Yeah. You what know, are you it, thinking? It's actually, I mean, it was close to home for us because I run a retreat twice a year and we actually do it in Fort Lauderdale uh, every single time. So it, it was really, you know, we, we had so many of, of our clients, many of them who are local, who, you know, are supposed to be coming to a tr retreat in November and were really nervous. It, it, I think those moments can be very clarifying and, and I mean, God, I have no idea what it is to go through that and have your home, you know, swept away. I mean, it's a, it's a terrible thing. But I think that in any situation like that, whatever it is, it puts the focus on our relationships. I had friends, I have friends in Florida who were evacuating and they said to me that first there was this clarifying thought that I have to pack up a bag in the space of a day and, and leave. And uh, even that is clarifying to think, well, if I'm taking one bag, what do I put in that bag of everything I've got? What do right. I put in that bag? Very good exercise. Yep. Interesting. For, I think all of us as a mental exercise should go through that. Take five minutes and think if if I had to pack up my bag in the next 10 minutes or hour, what would I put in there? What's special to me that I couldn't live without? And I think all of us come to realize it's a, a lot less than we think. Amen. The second thing is that the most important things we have can't be put in the bag. Yeah. They're the people in our lives and it's the relationships. And, and I, I think anything that connects us again to the people in our lives there is a at least a silver lining there in the way it addresses our focus and i think that at least you know i don't take anything away i think it's a terrible thing but i it, i think that's a beautiful uh, way to rearrange our focus a little you know going through a hurricane and losing everything or watching friends lose things or just lose, losing things temporarily can that can be a major jolt that can be a wild drastic move in your life that could change the way you look at the world and actually make you a better person mm. in the long run. But you you also say that in order to change our lives and get on the right journey that's best for us, you don't have to make a drastic move unless it's forced on you like a hurricane. You can actually do small little moves and those things add up to great, great I, possibilities. I, the funny thing is, I think it's small moves that change our lives 
but it's usually big events that get us to start making the small moves. Um, you know, I always say to people, the life doesn't reward perfection, it rewards proactivity. You have to actually start doing something. But most people have this kind of, I, self-help actually, and ironically, and I know I'm, you know, biting the hand that feeds me here, but it, it drives me crazy because there's so many aphorisms about, you know, quit your job and make a big change and do that. And I think that's what scares people. When you say big things like that and they have to, you know, they you have someone who's just going to up their uproot their life overnight to do something completely different. So or, people may feel like they're in a rut because they don't have the guts to make a massive change. You're saying you can make small changes and you can still come out I, great at the end. A hundred percent. I think sometimes, for example, if you're in a job you don't like right now, I think you earn the right to leave by what you do in your spare time and how you build something up. So that you don't suddenly, you know, all of us have got responsibilities and it's irresponsible sometimes to tell someone just to ditch everything and go and do something different because they have, their life could fall apart if you tell them to do that. I think it's more important to get, just get the car moving. What a lot of us are doing is sitting in a stationary car and we're trying to look around the corner to see what will happen if we make a, a certain move. Well, you can't see around a corner. All you can do is take the car up to the end of the road and then look right and look left and see what the best way is. The problem for most people is that they're sitting in a stationary car looking for answers. And what we have to do is actually just get the car moving. Do something small today that contributes to, uh, uh, if it's a big crazy vision that you feel is unrealistic, fine, S thin slice it down to the smallest, most modest, most pathetic possible action you, you, you could take me today here these are great pieces of advice but give me an example a simple um, exa a simple example you know look for me i was i was actually 17 years old when i was excited about the idea of of you know discussing ideas on human dynamics and people and but i was also 17 years old i was smart enough at least to know that no one would take me seriously and what I did was I found people in London who were running seminars and were talking about life or dating or whatever. And I said, I'm going to find someone who's who's not even doing this well. I'm just going to find someone who can get five people to a workshop. Because, you know, in my head, I was excited about like Tony Robbins and the idea that there's people who get like 10,000 people to an event. But that's actually depressing. Your idols can be depressing because they create so such an extravagant picture of, of, of what you can do in life that you think I'm never going to do that. So what I prefer to do is pick someone who's like half a step in front of me. And what I did was, even though I was going through university at the time, I found someone who was running these seminars in London for like five people. I, w I paid to go to the seminar. I went along and, and they weren't doing a good job. What I didn't know at the time is he had literally set up his business like three weeks before I got there. <laughs> oh, there is that. Right. But... I went and I remember at the end of the thing saying to him, listen, I'll, I want to help. Let me come back and, you know, I'll be your speaker for the first five minutes. Just while everyone's sitting down. It doesn't matter. Five you, minutes. You'll be the warm up guy. Anything. Yeah. Or I'll just sit there and help. What, what do you need? And of course, at the time, he needs free labor. He just started. But here's what I know. Even though he's not doing a good, he's not doing a good job right now, he's doing a better job than me. He's got five people in the room. I don't even know how to get one person in a room right now. So I can learn from this guy. So to me, I think we're all setting our sights on these massive role models when actually we should be looking at someone who's just a couple of steps in front of us. And those people, here's what I love about life is the person who's like the, the god of your field, he's not going to have lunch with you. Right. That person, the idea of like, find your idol and buy them lunch and, and sit with them. They're not, they haven't got time to sit and have lunch with you. They don't, they don't even have time to have lunch with their family. They don't have time for that. What their most valuable resource is time. So I prefer to find someone who's just in front of me, who will meet with you or who does need your help and start helping them. That's a modest way to thin, thin slice your goal down to something you can actually do today. So little, little moves are better than no moves. So just get started. Yeah. No matter what your dream is, just just get started. And some of the best advice, we'll take a break here. Some of the best advice I got, because we wanted to start this new this new show called iHeart Live. It's going to be every morning around 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Cameras turn on and we are live to talk about everything we want to talk about. But we're on with with visual content. And we were, we were sitting down going through meetings like, how do we strategize? How do we start? What do we do? And a, an expert in the field came in and said, just start. Don't mm -hmm. think about it. 
just start. So if you want to lose weight, if you want to get healthier, if you want to be more kind to people at work, you don't have to wait till Monday. You start now. My just, favorite, just get started. One of my just favorite quotes is Voltaire's, um, don't make the perfect the enemy of the good. Uh, what is this getthefreechapter.com, Matthew? Um, well, this is more for the ladies. Sorry, gents, but I wanted to give away something to the ladies today. <laughs> okay. um, there's um, a, a program I have called How to Talk to Men, which actually goes through really great phrases to have in all different conversations with men. And it's really powerful. And uh, I think women will love it. Uh, I already know they do, but I'm giving away a free chapter to your listeners today. So if they go to getthefreechapter.com, all of your listeners can download it. And the chapter I'm giving away is actually on flirting. So anyone out there who feels like they're not creating enough opportunity or they're in the friend zone with someone or they just don't flirt enough, it's perfect. Perfect. Getthefreechapter.com. That's getthefreechapter.com. So why is, let's talk about something very positive. Yeah. Dating. Why, in your opinion, Matthew, and I heard you say this, now is the best time to date more than any other time. Why now more than any other time to go dating? I see, I know a ton of people are going to disagree with me on this, and I hear all the time how gloomy the dating landscape is, but I genuinely think this is a unique, amazing time to date. And the reason is less people than ever know how to talk to another human being. People are lost in True. their devices, they are addicted, they go out and they're glued to their phones. And so if you are a person, who still knows how to talk to a human being in 2017, you will win. <laughs> this I is so true. Yep. I would rather, as a man, I would rather compete with the guys today than the Don Drapers of the 50s. Wow. I don't want to compete with Don Draper. I want to compete with Todd, who <laughs> sat at the bar... <laughs> Tindering Sparkle Skirt 22 <laughs> while I'm looking at the room and seeing what opportunities are actually there while I'm prepared to go over to someone. If you're a woman, you don't want to compete with Marilyn Monroe making eyes at a guy across the bar. You want to compete with Tiffany, who's not even concentrated on her date because she's checking out how many likes she has on her latest cleavy, cleavage picture on Instagram. You're saying, you're saying you know, like, th the opportunity is there. Take advantage of this opportunity to stand out from the crowd. Yeah, because people are people are uh, zombies so how, right so, now. So, so give me, in rapid fire way, how can I better communicate with people Without using, without my device near me. Like, what are the secrets? Firstly, don't be afraid to go up to people. Don't be afraid to go and snap them out of their state. I don't care if they've got their earphones in. People actually want to be shaken out of that coma that they walk around in right now. And secondly, just because everybody else is is going for the path of least resistance in dating, don't do that. Be the path of more resistance, right? If you meet a guy on a dating app, don't go on a date with him unless you speak to him on the phone. Get him on the phone. If he won't get on the phone with you, you know he's not serious. If he can do a five-minute phone call, great. I know you're brave enough to have a phone call and you're serious enough to take the time. I, I, I always say, look, two words you need to know in dating, TV and candy. TV okay? and candy. TV and candy. Ask a kid what they want. What would they say? TV and candy. I want to stay home today from school. I want to watch TV and I want to eat candy. That doesn't mean it's what's best for the child. That just means that's what the child wants. But what the child wants and what the child needs are very different things. In dating, what a man wants and what a man needs are two very different things. A man will go on a date with you tonight and what he wants is to go home with you. What he needs is something different. He will convince you, by the way, that TV and candy is the thing you should give him. <laughs> He'll convince you it's the best possible idea and everything's going to be great if you do. But if you give a kid TV and candy, they don't grow up educated. They don't grow up in shape. They grow up, you know, with low self-esteem. Again, with a man, if you give him everything he wants instead of what he needs, then you're never going to end up in the relationship you want. And the smart woman knows the difference. So what you're saying again is now is the best time more than ever to date someone because a lot of people are walking around, I love how you say this, in a coma because of social media yep. and because of just keeping their heads buried in their devices. That's right. So go take advantage of that. One quick thing. How can you tell if your best guy friend has feelings for you and should, should you give it up? At what point? Let it go. Are you in the friend zone? How do you know if you're in the friend zone or not? Is it worth it to go ahead and ask the question or just ignore it? I, look, I'm a big believer in... in baby steps go flirt with someone a little bit go be more tactile with them than you normally would tease them see how they respond to that i don't think if you like your friend you don't have to blow up your friendship overnight it's possible to 
inch forward and see if they then inch forward right. with you. But it can be in degrees. No one has to, again, it's no, it doesn't have to be a drastic move. It's the same thing we talked about in life. Little tiny moves, but know when to like walk away. And, yeah. don't, and don't be ashamed to do it. Elvis Duran Show, Instagram Live with Matthew Hussey. Go there right now. Your phone tap next. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. Thanks, Dad.